undervolting is a great way to increase the power efficiency of your GPU. There are many benefits to undervolting your GPU, such as reduced power consumption, reduced temperatures, reduced fan noise, and less stress on your components over time. The GeForce RTX 4070 is already the most power efficient 200 watt GPU, but it can be made even more efficient through undervolting. Combining undervolting with overclocking, you can still have excellent performance while using less power. In the last video, I showed the quick process of undervolting the RTX 4070 using MSI Afterburner and created an undervolt curve with 995 millivolts at over 2.8 gigahertz. In this video, I reduced the millivolt value further, which reduces power consumption even more. Disclaimer, the values shown in this video are what I reached on my particular GPU. Different RTX 4070s will reach different values. I have created two undervolt curves and will benchmark them in a few separate games to get some power and performance figures. The first curve, which I will call undervolt 1, is 2820 MHz at 995 millivolts. This is similar to the curve from the first video. The second curve, which I'll call undervolt 2, is 2700 MHz at 920 millivolts. For the old undervolt curve, I added a plus 120 MHz core clock offset to MSI Afterburner and flattened the curve at 995 millivolts as shown in the previous video. For the 920 millivolt undervolt, I found that I was able to add a bigger offset and remain stable in the tests shown in this video. For this curve, I added a plus 210 MHz core clock offset while flattening the curve at 920 millivolts. I attempted a third curve at less than 900 millivolts, but ran into an issue where memory clock speeds dropped significantly in some scenarios, tanking performance. I'll show an example of this later on. Going from the first curve to the second curve is a 75 millivolt drop, so there should be a nice difference in power consumption. There is only a 4% difference in clock speed, so the performance should not drop too much. And I have also overclocked the memory on each undervolt by plus 1000 in MSI Afterburner. It is important to test a variety of games and benchmarks for power numbers as different games can push the GPU in different ways. I did a quick stability test with Combustor and then ran the game benchmarks without crashing. But this test alone cannot guarantee stability. You will need to test a wide array of games to confirm that your settings are stable. Here is the test system. I'm using a Core i5-13600K overclocked to 5.5 GHz which I have paired with DDR4-4000. Undervolt 1 is set to 2820 MHz at 995 millivolts. Undervolt 2 is set to 2700 MHz at 920 millivolts. In addition to the undervolt results, I will also post stock values so we can see the difference in performance and power. Borderlands 3 was tested using the high preset at 1440p it was tested using DX11, since that seems to produce a better result on my machine. In Borderlands 3, the first undervolt has higher clocks than stock while using less power, but the second undervolt is using considerably less power. Undervolt 2 is also running a bit cooler than the other two examples, with the fans running a bit slower. The clocks on both undervolts are stable while stock clocks fluctuate a bit. Undervolt 1 ended up performing 5 FPS faster than stock while using less power. More performance for less power is always a good result to see. Undervolt 2 ended up performing similarly to the stock results, but the power difference is pretty big. Around 50 watts saved versus stock, and around 30 watts less than the first undervolt. Guardians of the Galaxy was tested at ultra settings with Ultra RT enabled. 
The resolution is set to 2560 by 1440 with DLSS quality. As you'd expect, the undervolts are both using a bit less power than stock, with the second undervolt showing quite a large difference in power. However, the 920 millivolt undervolt only loses a few FPS versus stock. Undervolt 1 was slightly faster than stock, but the minimum saw a nice improvement. Power consumption was down a bit too. Undervolt 2 is around 1% slower than stock, but the minimum FPS was higher, and the power consumption difference was large, around 50 watts saved. Shadows of the Tomb Raider was tested with the high preset plus high RT shadows. The resolution is set to 2560 by 1440 with DLSS quality. Shadows of the Tomb Raider shows more of the same. Lower power consumption for the undervolts, lower fan speeds for the undervolts, with undervolt 1 again beating stock, and undervolt 2 having massive power savings while not losing much performance. I also tested a third undervolt curve, which was less than 900 millivolts, but ran into an issue where the card's memory clocks reduced by more than half in some scenarios. I saw this happen in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and as a result, performance tanked. If it happens in one game, there are probably more games where this occurs as well. For this reason, Somewhere around 920 millivolts is the lowest I would go when setting an undervolt curve. Next, I'll take a closer look at stock versus the two undervolts power consumption in various scenarios. In the shadows of the Tomb Raider menu, at stock, the card is drawing 194 watts with a 158 FPS average. With the 920 millivolt undervolt, the FPS drops less than 2% down to 155 FPS, but the power savings drops by 54 watts. The stock card is drawing an extra 39% power for less than 2% extra FPS in this instance. Compared to the previous undervolt, the 920 millivolt undervolt is within 4% performance, but draws 23% less power. Quake 2 RTX was one example from the last video where the undervolted card drew more power than stock. This time, with the 920 millivolt undervolt, the power is reduced while still performing higher than stock. It's a 2.8% gain while using 25 less watts on average. Compared to the undervolt one from last video, there is a less than 3% performance loss with 20% power savings. In the Metal Gear Solid 5, the Phantom Pain menu, I have unlocked the frame rate, but there still seems to be a cap since the GPUs were not fully utilized. Each profile runs at a similar performance within 2%, but compared to the 920 millivolt undervolt at just 73 watts, the stock card is pulling an extra 52% power at 111 watts. Compared to last video's undervolt, the 920 millivolt undervolt is drawing 20% less watts for similar performance. In the Guardians of the Galaxy menu, the 920 millivolt undervolt loses 3.6% performance compared to stock, but does so while drawing 52 watts less. The new undervolt loses less than 4% versus the old undervolt but is again around 20% less watts. In the Ghost Runner menu, all cards are performing similarly, hitting my monitor's 170 FPS limit. But compared to stock, the 920 millivolt undervolt is drawing 48 less watts. Versus the old undervolt, the new undervolt is using 20% less power. In LEGO Builder's Journey, the stock card is 6.5% faster, but uses 67 more watts versus the 920 millivolt undervolt. When comparing both undervolts, the old undervolt is 5% faster while using 22% more power. I've taken the six game average 
of relative performance and the power figures to arrive at the following numbers. Over the six game average, the stock card was 1.7% faster than the 920 millivolt undervolt, but it required 36% more power to do so. When comparing the 920 millivolt undervolt versus the 995 millivolt undervolt, the 995 millivolt undervolt is 2.3% faster while using 21% more power. In the end, I'd say an undervolt at around 920 millivolts might be one of the best in terms of power savings. There is only a small performance loss on average versus stock, but the power savings is pretty big. Along with the power savings comes less fan noise, lower temperatures, and less wear on the components. Around 920 millivolts seems to be the sweet spot on my card as I was able to get a higher offset while greatly reducing power. I'll gladly give up 2% performance from stock if it saves me 40 to 50 watts. As always, after setting your undervolt, it is important to check stability by running stress tests and playing games while verifying that there is no crashing. Thanks for watching.